Hello, Steve. Hello, Jill. It's time to game classy. Boat. There you go. Boat. 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 Yeah. Boat. 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 Game classy. That should be our new theme song from now on. Classy. Including me saying this and saying this. Classy. We gotta put in some fresh, funky, like, like, lo-fi hip-hop beats to study by. To, on there. to study slash relax. X. Yes, study too. slash relax. I do that for my... I actually love the lo-fi hip-hop beats. I listen to them at work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do, I do it all the time at work, too, because, like, when I have, uh, like, all right, guys, it's paper writing time, and I give them, like, a class period to, like, work on their actual you paper. You put on the lo-fi hip-hop study beats? I do, because it's... To study slash relax, too? What I do is I turn it up really loud, too, so they can't talk. Oh, so they nice. want to, like, talk to each other. It's just, like, really loud and obnoxious. It's like... <laughs> Yes. Like, like you have to listen to the lo-fi. <laughs> yeah. I like so it. it screws up with their heads a little bit too. Nice. Sometimes I like to use the um the the high frequency sounds that only teenagers can hear because I can't really hear it anymore. Wee. Yeah, I sometimes do that. I just turn it on in my pocket and just let it go. Just to like nice. I, I you know, I gotta mess with the teenagers a little bit. I finished or the, a lot. Uh, I finished the most recent season of Ash vs. Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. The show's pretty good. Yeah. It's over. It's done. It's gone. Not doing again. They're not doing another season. No. You are so far. You are like you're like Slowpoke. You are the you are the Pokemon. But it's but human it's, equivalent of Slowpoke. But it, but, it, but it's not over. Yeah. 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 It is. Stars canceled it. No. Because <laughs> people were like, "Fuck stars." I'm gonna watch it on Netflix when it comes out uh, a year and a half later. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> you're the reason it got canceled, Steve. You're the reason. You did it. Congratulations. Well, it's unfortunate. <laughs> they should have had stars now. <laughs> I'm not arguing that, but... Well, yeah, I, uh... What was I gonna say? Oh. Well, that's okay. He'll, his journey will live on on Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, there's the DLC character. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I've said it before. I've said it on, on, on uh, Play On. I've said it on this cast. I just don't understand, like, how people get so fucking exciting about fighting games. I just... I can't do it. I... I want it. I'm just. I'm happy for you guys. You guys are like, oh, cool. You got Mortal Kombat 11 coming out, but it's like I just. I don't get it. Pat gets really super excited. He's like, I got a new Mortal Kombat. I got the the uh, my new Street Fighter uh, stand up arcade. I'm like, cool. You know why you don't get it? Because you're an old man. I am an old man. Youth. I'm playing Earthbound right now. <laughs> that game's fun. I've n I've never actually played it all oh, the way through. It's fun. Yeah. Um, it's it's interesting to say the least. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, yeah. There's there's some really there's some there's some there's some good gags in there. I like it. There's yeah, a, it's there's some weird characters. I like the dude who's like who's like super strong. He's like oh he's like I'm so strong. All I do is lift weights and eat garlic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> I was uh yeah it, it's it's very odd. Let's let's put it that way. Yeah, From what I rem I don't remember much it of is it. Odd. <laughs> yeah, it's and also the graphics not as good as I remember being. Well, I mean I was it's old, but I mean, the, the, the 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 visuals are still pretty good for. Well, you know, a Super Nintendo game. Yeah, I love the the soundtrack. Is like ten out of ten. That's like my favorite part about the game. Like mm -hmm. the, the battle music and stuff. Yes, Punch Out. <laughs> That's my go-to battle music. Punch Out. Yes, That's fair. Anyway, welcome to Game Classy, everybody. My name is Joe, and with me is always my co-host Steve. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Um, before we get into anything else, uh, I just want to acknowledge our, our friends at Titan Forge uh, for sending us some sweet, 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 sweet swag. Yeah, uh, from some their new Kickstarter, dope ass ogre pirates. Yeah, Steve was talking uh, actually last week about doing a thousand point Age of Sigmar games once the new rules drop, and he was like, "I'm going to get some Titan Forge ogres." Um, you got to do it now if you haven't pledged already, because I think it, the the Kickstarter ends today. Dope ass fucking ogres. Yeah, so he they sent over just a couple of the the models. Their resin um, casting, not that guys. Like, listen, Titan Forge, I love you guys, um, and your casting was great when you did your last few Kickstarters. But you guys have gotten so far above and beyond where you were 
I don't know, when this podcast started, it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you look so nice. The little dude with the accordion and the dodo that goes I on his shoulder. This, I think this might be one of my favorite models, like, ever. <laughs> just, like, just full stop. Like, he's so fucking cool. I know. And and here's the funny thing. It's like, you look at Games Workshop, which is supposed to be the epitome, or at least the the top mainstream manufacturer, and their ogres are goddamn terrible. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, I don't think they're that terrible. But I, I think they're awful. Uh, but the, uh, I also really like their, their their raiders, the dudes who ride on the big beasts. I like those guys a well, lot. Well, yeah, those are the latest uh, of the sculpts. Right, yeah. which is their, that's the current ogre army. Like, the other ogres haven't been updated since 6th edition. That's uh, true. And, the, and the, ogre, the ogre army they're pushing is the riders. But that aside, it's because you can't get the level of, like, characterfulness and, like, cool shit, uh, in multi multi part plastics, that that's yeah. what it is. You, you like this dude, this awesome fucking accordion dude. He would never exist as a GW model because they that's not their business model. They don't do cool single characters. They they they're like buy six boxes of this thing and put it together. <laughs> multi part plastics, multi part yeah. plastics. Yeah, all they want is multi part plastics. plastics. So, I mean, like they're great and like they make sense for you know what you need them for, which is your infantry and like your your goons. You're gonna paint a shit ton of, but like you know these are. These are something something else. Yeah, they're really fucking sweet. And he's got a dodo. Like, it's the best. <laughs> I mean, it's a real like, and the guy with the shark skin. Uh, yeah, he's cool too. I don't want to downplay the 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 captain. He's very cool. He's wearing a fucking shark as like a as a cape. Yeah, and he's uh, got like a big fucking anchor. As yeah, a weapon. his weapon is an anchor. Like, it's a it's a sweet army altogether. Very, very cool. And uh, we didn't get any of the Amazons, but definitely I do really like the Amazon army that the they put up. Men? Yeah, well, the Amazons riding lizards. The Am- the Amaz- the Amazon lizardmen. Amazon lizardmen. Amazon little li- lizardmen. <laughs> they're they're that's a cool army. It, it's clearly like that's a counts as lizardman army. It looks dope. Yeah, and they uh, they also sent the ogre captain riding the crab, and I kept him because I was like, mm, I'm not gonna let Steve have this. They actually have another <laughs> model of uh, crab riders. Yeah, there's, they do. There's like the two guys on the back of the crab. Yeah, that's with the with, sick the, too. with the guns or yeah. whatever the harpoon. Yeah, that's also yeah, pretty fucking sick. I know. And as I say, I've said this before a thousand times. We have no integrity here at Game Classy. We are not like, like we'll promote the things that we like. We are integrity farms. Yeah, but you know what? Sending us free, uh, sending us some models to uh, to to look at and Google over. That's gonna make us like promote your stuff even more. So I'm just saying. I don't know. I think I think we have some integrity <laughs> because I'm I'm fairly certain if you sent us something crappy, we would definitely shit on it. Well, yeah, we we've done that before. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, not not like a, co- a company sending us stuff we don't usually shit on. But that's because most companies that send us stuff usually send us some pretty high quality. Yeah, shit. I was gonna say like I, I don't think mostly we shit on like European candy. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's like it's not a mo- well I don't know most of the I think. Not to, like, fucking jerk ourselves off, but I think, like, most of the stuff we like and promote is pretty good. Yeah. Like, I don't think there's a... We love the thing. Uh, we love the things we love. We hate the uh, things we hate. Also, I don't think that there's... And we hate the things you love. I don't think there... I, I don't believe there are currently any active tabletop companies producing miniatures that are producing, like, objectively foul models. I think all of the models... Like, even Malifaux doesn't have terrible models. No, no. Like, their models are fine. Like, they're... they're, I don't like their aesthetic, but the models are good. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to sit there... I'm not going to say their sculpts are bad, because they're cool. And they have that, like... That unit of Japanese ghosts. They look fucking awesome. <laughs> it doesn't make any goddamn sense why there's Japanese ghosts in a game with fucking hillbilly goblins, but like the models are cool. Yeah. Uh, so it's one of those things is like I would, I like maybe I would buy those models to like paint and use them for something. Certainly not to play Malifaux, but the models are cool. Um, you know, like that's that, and that. I think that's just the. I think that more speaks to the level of talent in the industry yeah. at this point. Like, well, I also think the great sieve has happened. Like, after the initial boom of wargaming, it's like the sieve happened where everything just kind of got through and only the good things went through. Oh, yeah. And now it's like, okay, so once all of this shit went through, we only have this good stuff. And now you have to compete with the stuff that survived the great sieve. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because all the, all the, all the mediocre, all the, the mediocre to bad stuff has been just weeded out. Yeah. And there, and there's still some bad stuff. Trust me. I've, oh, sure. I've seen a lot of it on Kickstarter and whatever else have you. Oh, of course. I mean, you're, you're, there's never not going to be, but like, there's, there's bad sculptors just went into 3d sculpting. <laughs> so they just try and sell their files through Patreon and, um, what's that? Uh, Kickstarter. Shapeways? Well, not yeah. Well, Shapeways too. Where they're like, Hey, Subscribe to my Patreon to get these cool 3D model, you know, renders uh, that you could print on your 3D printer. And it's like, first of all, your models are shit. Second of all, my 3D printer is not good enough to print 28 millimeter models. <laughs> so let's uh, 
let's let's ease up here you know you got to do it through the resin printers which i have to get because i have a problem as steve has said numerous times it's true does it just like goop resin into a shape it does it's really cool nice um, the, and the they coolest, look the coolest 3d printer i've seen is the one that makes um it makes helmets like motorcycle helmets yeah because it just uses a cube of steel uh-huh. And it like the, the it goes in like the center of the thing, or maybe it's aluminum. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's fucking dope because it just like it, an arm grabs the cube and it goes like, Wink, and then it just starts spinning. spinning. Yeah, and then the cube starts like going whoa, 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 and these things just start whapping it, and then suddenly it's like helmet. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that's like, technically considered a three D printer, but I guess it, it would be. It, it did. It's a three D printer. Yeah. It's it because it because it can make it can it prints using material yeah. using other stuff. Yeah, it's not just helmets. It makes other things. Yeah. I, it's just it's whatever I don't it it doesn't matter I have a I have a, a very nice plastic one that I do some really cool terrain on so that's all that I use it for and that's all that I ever really need to use it for because if I ever found out a way to making like miniatures using a 3d printer like legit really good 28 millimeter print like printed figures my life would be over <laughs> it just would be I would you just, just have super long fingernails like a giant beard and they have Kleenex boxes on your feet and you're just like I've got to print another space marine <laughs> aside from the Kleenex boxes you've just described yourself hey hey <laughs> Hey, hey! I don't have a really long beard. I just have a beard. You have a pretty long. Your beard's pretty long right now. I think so. Yeah, it's yeah. You nice. gotta you gotta keep that trimmed a little bit. No way. You gotta you gotta just bring it back. Never. I'm I'm not saying you can't grow it long. I'm just saying you have to take care of it when it's that long. Man, I wish I had cleaning cleaning boxes on my feet. <laughs> And jars of urine in your closet? No, I drink the urine. <laughs> it's sterile and it tastes good. It's, it's, it's necessary? No, but it's sterile and I like the taste. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that 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 was kind of a what what we got in the mail there on that. Um. So th- it's a mailbag. Couple. I guess the big news is the UK Games Expo. What happened this uh, weekend? Which is UK Games Sexpo. The Sexpo, where a bunch of British people have British sex. Almost. <laughs> Almost, almost, and done. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Let's see what's on the BBC Two. <laughs> nice. Today on the BBC Two, we have our coverage of the UK ex- Sexpo. I Game actually, sexpo. Uh, I actually saw uh, some something pretty vulgar from UK Twitter, which I really enjoyed. Was uh, these fucking uh, what do they call? I don't know what they call. Uh, there's a word for bros in uh, the Chavs. UK. Chavs. Okay, yeah. yeah. So there's some chavs walking uh, down the street, and they're all talking <laughs> to each other. And there's this fucking like, just like the camera just pans to the right, and there's just dude just like finger blasting a lady in like the middle of a fucking alley. And they're like, they're just walking by, and he's like, he just turns and looks at me. He's like, he's like, lads. <laughs> and then, then they're like, and they're like, right. And he's like, all right. And they just fucking walk by. I was like, that's that's the that's. All right. <laughs> I was like, that's a thing that happened. It, it truly just, is. Lads. <laughs> I was just like, I, I, get, I mean, you're all right. What are you going to do? Lads. So there was a, a, a bunch of, you know, it, it was a lot of, it's kind of like our origins, I would say, if I had to put a comparison to anything. Our Assassin's Creed origins. Um, or the Origins Game Festival in, you know, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, nobody goes to that. People do. People really like Origins. Yeah, I, I kind of actually do want to go to Origins. I kind of do, too, because Columbus has an amazing food scene, from what I hear. They have, like, an all-you-could-eat sausage restaurant. That's a lot of sausage. I know, because we're from Chicago, and we can eat a lot of sausage. They still like a sausage. <laughs> um, you got to complain about it the whole time. They'll be like, yeah, this is this sausage isn't as good as, uh, as old Dick Portillo's. <laughs> and then you just start eating more of the sausage <laughs> while you're talking about it. I love me some Portillo's. Dick Portillo's. <laughs> they have a pretty good fish sandwich. Uh, they they do. I just don't normally get it. I'm all in the I'm on the pesca. So oh, you're a, a, you're pescatarian now. Yeah, it's uh, a so fish sandwich. Hey, there you go. I I like fish as much as next. I'm always worried about my mercury levels though. Hey, you know what? If I can get enough to go insane or insaner, I'm okay. Yeah, I was with gonna that. say you're almost mad as a hatter as we are, as we speak. I'm okay with that. I will get a big. I, I used to have a sweet mad hatter hat. I don't know what the fuck happened to it. You you stopped playing Malifaux. <laughs> I had it before the foe. <laughs> I had it before the foe. <laughs> what, you, what you heard about Malfoy just shrunk down to a regular size It just hat. became a normal... No, it just turned into a normal hat. Like a flat... Just like a regular, like, snapback. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a... Uh, I'll cover the you, uh, the Games Workshop stuff, the, the news that came out of there just in a second. But what they... Uh, a story that I saw in there that was kind of... It made some news. It made some big news is that they actually had to escort an uh, a dungeon a DM out of the convention. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. that was pretty fucked up. Yeah. So he was... They were running an RPG and he had his... Uh, 
his players participate in a gang rape. No, no, no. He had their characters gang raped. Oh, not gang, participate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. Fucking, he had them yeah. like knocked out and had well, their characters gang raped. They're still participating in a gang rape. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah, I, I, you, you know, well, let's not split hairs on this. Is he? Had the, <laughs> there was a gang rape involved inside of the. Pretty fucked up. Yeah. So and she was like, "What? What? Yeah, I like the shock value." That's what, I was, that, that, I, that was his so, actual quote. Yeah, yeah I yeah, like the so, shock value of so it. So he was, uh, he was, he was dismissed, and he's banned from teacher <laughs> events. <laughs> you are dismissed. <laughs> Good yeah, taste. Yeah, that's that's some poor taste. <laughs> oh my god, it's like I was, and I was talking about this with with my wife because she's not a gamer at all. She doesn't understand gaming. She doesn't understand this world, which is part of the reason why we're still married. Um, in that, you know. When you think about it, like you, as in Steve, when you think about it, back in the 90s, 2000s, RPGs and stuff like that were not necessarily, were not mainstream. Like, yes, even the, the most, most mainstream one was Vampire. Well, at, well, the most mainstream one was Dungeons and Dragons, because that was the one that had the name cachet. Well, when it when third came out, yeah, but yeah. like in that in that br- in that period of time when it was advanced, it was a uh, it like or in the early 90s, <sighs> Vampire was like. Yeah, but it's still every fucking gigantic. Everybody, well, and that's even so is that Dungeons and Dragons through the Satanic Panic of the 1980s, everyone was like, "Oh, Dungeons and Dragons makes you worship the devil." Oh, oh, oh. and then there were some people like, "Wait, what? That sounds pretty cool." The devil, <laughs> the devil, <Sweet>. you say? <laughs> I'm gonna go get into this Dungeons and Dra- Dragons, and then you sit down with like your dungeon master. You're like, "When do we get to the devil?" Yeah, when do we get to the devil worshiping? <laughs> devil worshiping? You've got to roll your stats. <laughs> <laughs> What's your background? Yeah, I mean, you can worship the devil, but you're not gonna get any powers unless you're a cleric. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Just to get it done over with, I made some pre-made characters for you. You are the Spruce Moose. But. <laughs> <laughs> Does he worship the devil? Uh, yes, yeah, so you certainly can. <laughs> you can, but the devil's name is Asgabone, and he's actually chaotic neutral. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> exactly. And so people would go to games like Vampire because they were edgier, and by edgier I mean in quotes because like the people... I think they just rode the wave of the, the 90s goth yeah, scene. Yeah, the 90s goth scene, but I mean it was edgier, and it was like... You would have, like, characters who were satanic or whatever, or, like, evil it, vampires. It was also the first game that I can think of that was was setting-wise, like, our world. Yeah. Like, Vampire well, was, like, you were... But, like, the, the world of Vampire the Masquerade was the world of our 90s, like, literally. Like, like Chica- they had, like, books yeah, like yeah, yeah. Chicago by Night and, like, Detroit by Night. Yeah, I guess it was, like, modern times, 1990s, because they had modern Cthulhu, but I don't know when modern Cthulhu... Dropped like around fifth edition. Yeah. Also, was not nearly as large as Vampire. It was not, but I, I'm just trying to think of it at the time, like games that took place in the real world. Yeah. Because yeah, well, there's a few that took place in the quote unquote real world, but most of them were. It's real to me. Most of them were um, different time 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 frames. Like Cyberpunk. Yeah. Cyberpunk is to our Cyberpunk 2020 is our world, but it's Cyberpunk. It was 20 years in the future. <laughs> 30 years I, I, actually, in the future. It's, it's, yeah, it's one year in the future now. <laughs> <laughs> we're not in it. Well, we're kind of... We're, we're getting there. The problem there's, is... There's is some that, cyberpunk stuff. It's a, we're, we've definitely got the dystopia down. We're a boring dystopian cyberpunk <laughs> future. We're the worst cyber t- f- yeah. cyberpunk future out there. Oh, man, if only we were cyberfunk. <laughs> cyberfunk is completely different. <laughs> That's what we're actually riding around in Bootsy Collins' mothership, you know? Finally. <laughs> I think I'm, uh, I'm going to pick up some Starfinder stuff. Why, really? Yeah. Yeah, but it, what I was—we'll get back to that. But what I was saying is, is that it was vampire was edgy, and there would be stuff like your group gets gang raped, and people would be like, "Oh, that's terrible." But it was like, it was a—it was just like that's what that, they, they also yeah. differentiated those those spe- those spe- that that content was different because there was white wolf. The game was what the company was white, white wolf. wolf. Yeah, they had a line of books called Black Dog, which those were, were the eighteen in, plus. Yeah, like. If you're doing something with the Black Dog book, there's adult content in it. But that's what I'm saying is is that nowadays is that you still have people who played back in the 90s, early 2000s who thought that that was appropriate trying to bring that into our modern world, which is where it is no longer. Or you're just a shitlord. Or you're a (laughs) shitlord. I'm going to go ahead and say that guy was on a power trip and he was a piece of shit. Well, yeah. It's not like White Wolf is. uh, I don't know what game he was playing. He was probably playing Dungeons and Dragons for all I know. It was d d It was d &D. No question. Yeah. Yeah. Because they didn't. I don't think they mentioned the game in the articles I read. Um, they probably couldn't. That's probably like not a uh, probably not a viable legal strategy. But we've talked about it before. In the, yeah, it's true. We've talked about it before inside this on this cast before that the 
RPG world is much more different because it's much more inclusive. So you have companies like White Wolf getting in a lot of fucking trouble because they're putting in like Chechen massacres and you know like really what's what's uh, non inclusive Contem- verbiage contemporary crimes. Yeah, contem- <laughs> they're putting contemporary war crimes in their book. Yeah, like and being like, yeah, the vampires did it, and you're like, no. Yeah, it's not like it's not like they're getting in trouble for not for not using neutral gender pronouns. They're using some like really homophobic and terrible language inside of their modules that are getting them in trouble. And you, Legend of the Flame Princess, same thing. Some of the art. It, that's more. Although I think yeah. Legend of the Flame Princess is less in the game and more, more out, out of the, the game. game. Yeah, that's what happens when you got some some shit lords working for you. Yeah, that's or, true. Or Norwegians. <laughs> Sorry, Skander. <laughs> Jens. <laughs> no, they're from Sweden. It's I said Scandinavian. That's that's Norway. Norway and Sweden is both Scandinavia. Nah. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm staying out of this one, guys. <laughs> guys, this is all on Steve. There, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, understanding of the. The Scandinavia, because I believe Scandinavia is actually Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, and maybe Iceland, but I don't think it's Iceland. Yeah, but if you lump them all together, they get mad because they because they hate each other. Well, that's Scandinavia. That's that's the lumping. That's the one thing that you lump. It's like the British Isles actually does lump in Ireland into it, and so you you're able to say that if you're in the British Isles. Potato man, ah, you're late. You know, Ireland, blah, 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 potato famine, blah, 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 only thing we know about in America, Irish history, Sinead O'Connor ripping up a picture. She's ripping up a picture of the Pope. (laughs) Take that, you Pope. (laughs) And she was right. We fucked up. That was all us. Obviously. I mean, ripping up a picture of the Pope is a smart idea. (laughs) Yeah, but not in the 90s. Like, nowadays, we're like, yeah, fucking rip up a picture of the Pope. We don't give a fuck. Yeah, I mean, even though I kind of like the the current Pope is, he's okay. He's okay. I mean, mean, as far as Popes go. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like he's it's like when you're the, the you know top of a of a poop mountain, it's you're still in a poop mountain. King shit of crap mountain. Yeah, king shit of crap mountain. That's right. Um, other stuff that came out of the UK Games Day is they they showed another war band for Warcry, which I'm I'm starting to get super psyched for that game. It looks really cool. I am I am. <laughs> just make bird noises the whole time. <laughs> I'm totally gonna do it. Yeah, and they're like, they're like, uh, what's that guy's weapon skill? <laughs> <laughs> just refuse to answer anything. Take, pick up your models and then just swoop. They throw them at the other models. It's like swooping attack. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you can't say anything. You just have to make bird noises, <laughs> and then and if there's anything shiny, you just 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 look at it and just like walk over to it, <laughs> just be easily distracted. <laughs> I just good. think of like the bird lady from the old Kids in the Hall sketch, like ah, that's my house. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, you have to get up. You have to get a little bowl of Cheerios and like gingerly grab one Cheerio at a time with three fingers and just. <laughs> no, no, no. You you lift it up and you put it above your head and you kind of swallow it like a duck. Yeah. Like. <laughs> We went to the Lincoln Park Zoo yesterday, and uh, there were like flamingos were were fucking going crazy and fighting seagulls. Flamingos it was, rule. It was it was pretty fun to watch, but the um, but yeah, they they previewed that. They also previewed um, the new some of the new big box games that are going to be coming out to the stores. Um, the what's it called? There's the the arena game that they have where it's like a rogue traders, like a bunch. There's like a bunch of new plastic oh, models the, that are coming the, out. Uh, the 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 big box store versions of like Kill Team and <clears throat> yeah. uh, Shadespire and stuff. Yeah, those are going to be <laughs> the biggest Shadespire news. I think is the digital version coming out. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. I don't remember if that no, was out we before. We haven't mentioned it. I don't yeah. know if it was, but yeah, they're doing a yeah. online one that is. It looks really nice. I mean, by that I mean it. It, it looks okay. The graphics. The, the 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 there's two problems with it as I see. One is that Warbands and the card packs are going to be DLC. You have to did buy you, them. Did you confirm that? Is that yes, confirmed? Yes, that is confirmed. Oh, all right. Well, fuck that. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm out every Warband, or is it going to be blocks? Cause, th- that I do not know. Okay. Because I, I was discussing, because if, if they sell it as... So, if they sell each... If you have to buy each Warband, depending on the price, that'll be... You know, we're going to throw that in the garbage. However... Uh, like pin it, pin in that. That's price dependent. Because I, I would be okay with buying each warband if the price was extraordinarily cheap. Also, would be okay with buying them in a block. Like they come out, like the the game launches with all of the core warbands, and then they sell the season two warbands for like ten bucks, and you get all of them. Yeah, I so mean, like pricing that... is going to matter a lot for that. Yeah, and the other thing is, it's only on Steam. That is the perfect mobile game. Why is it not a fucking mobile game? Well, I mean, if they want to make it, I, I have no idea what their plans are for it, but if they want to push it as an eSport, 
or any sort of like like but the, actual competition, they yeah. have to use Steam. Uh, agreed, but you could port it to fucking mobile. But well, they can do that later. Yeah. If, if the if the port if the uh, if the port works, you can use your Steam. It's not a really good mobile. esport game though. It's it's a card game. It's still even. It's just the, it's a literal translation the, of the board the, game. The counterpoint to that is people watch the fuck out of Magic Arena. It's true. Like they Magic do. Arena is huge on Twitch. Like, you know why it's huge on Twitch? Huge. Because you don't actually actually have to see the players. That's the reason why it's but huge. They all use the face cam. I, well, you could put a hey, little. You know what? I need to see the players. I need to see the man crouching <laughs> by the ass crack and giving giving the giving the prayers. And it's also you don't have to see the stink of the fucking actual game. Yeah, but Smash Brothers is huge, and they prove that anyone will be around <laughs> the stinkiest fucks imaginable. That there was a, oh yeah, because you went the, to the the fr- frosty frostings. So, l- luckily, there was uh, there there was definitely some stank some stank fucks, but uh, the the nothing was legendary. Nothing was legendary. Nothing was legendary. So, like, I was pretty happy about that. Usually, like, I, I haven't encountered, like, any convent like, the convention levels of stank, I don't know if we've ever ranked them, but, like, like I have to I have to say, like, I the Smash Brothers players in general are pretty nasty, like, overall. Uh, I think it's because they trend younger, over, yeah. and so they're just more filthy. Um, and also, the Smash, Bra- the Smash Brothers have a story that is, like, unmatched Ooh. in terms of, like, just being a degenerate gamer. Uh, a dude was in the grand finals of a Smash tournament and shit his pants in the middle of the grand finals, played out the grand finals, and then left. Uh, he did win. But he shit his pants, and the tournament organizer was like, "It still smells like shit in here." So that that was the most disgusting thing I've ever heard uh, as far as the Smash player, Smash player goes. But overall, I think like the, the I haven't hit an ultra stank since uh, gaming conventions like tabletop. Tabletop usually I get hit with the ultra stank, and I yeah. think it's because like they they've just like they come out of their like chrysalis like uh, on their piles of like books and stuff and ooze out. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is just. <laughs> Uh, it's just, but everything as everything. Deodorant's is. three fucking dollars. If you if you're too fucking lazy to take a shower, spend the three dollars and just slather the fuck out of yourself in deodorant. Yeah, I, there's just a lot of secondary and tertiary issues that are going on with a <laughs> lot of gamers. It is, it, and I think a lot of it's going away because, as I say, a lot of these hobbies are going more and more mainstream, which means that you're going to have. A lot more normal human beings participating true. and who Push shower and, and and they're like well, I don't want to play against this person who doesn't shower, and then the TO is like you know what I'm gonna go with the new person as opposed to the old person because the new person actually buys shit because they don't have anything <laughs> and you are an old fuck who is at head <laughs> who always comes in and says why do I need to buy something new I've had the same army since 1996 <laughs> and he's like all little fucking plastic goblins with all the spears broken you're like get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. Stinking up the joint. Stinking up the joint <laughs> with your with your nonsense. Get out of here. Get 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 get. get. <laughs> He's like poking him with a broom. <laughs> get. I was, uh... Oh my goblins! <laughs> my goblins! <laughs> he falls on top of them and they're all stuck into his, his chest. <laughs> <laughs> Get <laughs> poking him while he's on the ground. It's like, it's like turns on the lights and everyone's like, <laughs> <laughs> they scatter like they roaches. Scatter. <laughs> it's good. And they're beating them out with a broom. Like, Get out of here. Yeah, like the old, like the old racist caricatures in Tom and Jerry. Like the <laughs> <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> yeah, she's like, Get out of here. Uh, that's good. Uh, that good old. Her, that was her cat. It was her cat. Actually, they, 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 her care. So her character was inconsistent because sometimes she was just an old black lady with a with with a cat. Other times she was the housekeeper. Yeah, didn't make any sense. Well, there was no consistency in that universe. Well, sometimes there was a Bluto, and sometimes he was Brutus. Uh, that's true, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's a good little spinach. Oh, <laughs> hell, yeah. I'm bang that hot ass olive oil. Oh, oh. oh, Doc, there's something wrong with me. My arms are too big. Oh, I'm going to split her in half with me wanger. Oh, <laughs> Popeye didn't actually care about olive oil. He was a seaman. I'm going to fill olive oil with me <laughs> semen. <laughs> <laughs> he was a sailor. He was about other men and being manly on the seas. Do you think Do you think the entire conflict between, between, between him and Bluto was just their, like, taut... Uh, homosexual ten, uh, relationship, like coming to a head. Yeah, one hundred percent. And they were using olive oil as like a uh, a prop in their uh, in their <laughs> love turmoil. Yeah, in their uh, in their sexual machinations. Yes, oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. Do you think Do you think one of them was specifically the top in the relationship, or do you think it was a switch? Well, I don't think either of them actually wanted to admit to it. Right, but eventually that's going to come to a head. 
<laughs> more than in more ways than one. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. All right, and there's nothing wrong with that. The pro, the only thing that was wrong with it is the fact that they can't accept and be happy with who they are. All right, that's right. That's that's the, that's the problem the with it. Well, they, they don't, they don't the need shame. to be in this quasi angry relate in this uh, this psychosexual relationship and bringing poor olive oil into it, who did nothing wrong to either of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sinbad the Sailor. I love that. That's I love really the old uh, Art Fleischer, you know, oh, yeah, Popeyes course. with Sinbad. Fleischer, oh, gorgeous, Fleischer's incredible. Uh, and and the uh, the there's a, there's a there's an old Disney quote, and he says there he's he only had one competitor, and that was him. Fleischer was the only other animator that Walt Disney acknowledged as as like an actual competitor for Disney. <laughs> it was like because he's the one who's not Jewish. No. <laughs> Fleischer, maybe. <laughs> uh, I still, I still don't understand the. You guys, you guys are big Disney fans, right? Mm-hmm. Or at least Cole is. Yeah, I like Disney too. Yeah, I, I, I can't get Disney love. Can't do it. I, I, I'm just not a Disney fan. Did you not watch the Disney Afternoon as a child? I did, but it's still, I'm. My, my problems what with about the- Darkwing Duck. <laughs> when there's trouble, you call DW. I just, I just don't get it. I don't get. Like I, I watched a ton of Disney stuff, but like, I mean, there's also levels of like. Like well, there's tr- like yeah. there's girls whose Disney is their personality. Yeah, there's definitely like the you di- guys aren't like, that bad. The, there's like the Disney people, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I it's like I like Lord of the Rings a lot. I have but. I have friends who go to Disney regularly without their children. They like leave their children with their in laws. Well, yeah, that'd, uh, make, the, that'd make Disney way better. <laughs> yes, but. It's different when you have kids. Like you guys going to Disney, that's that's fine. You guys don't have kids. Oh, like, like actually leaving our kids at home to go to Disney. I yes. guess that would that is that that's is kind of a different thing. <laughs> exactly. I'll give you, you that. Say, you're like you sit there and you think about it like yeah, that would make Disney better. But then you're like, wait a second. You're, I mean, also you know, might just, I mean, it would still make Disney better because you have to deal with your damn wiener kids. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not arguing that fact. No, my problem is people who are like Disney has such great food. I'm like, no, Disney's food is terrible. Disney's food is very up and down because we went when we went. I I tried lots of different places, and like I have to say, like there were some places where I was like, that was phenomenal. Like the Avatar Land, I haven't. Yeah, everything I, I ate at the Avatar Land was fucking incredibly good. I ate Jake Sully's dick. <laughs> I did. No, no, it was it was a it was a it was a fucking uh, blue pile, which I imagine was was one of the blue people's shit. Uh, I ate a, I ate a big but a big Avatar cat person turd. It was amazing. Uh, all of the food at the Avatar Land was fucking incredibly good. And then, every, but Disney's like it's fucking up and down. Like there's some there's some restaurants where it's just like eh, like this restaurant was pretty. Like they're all expensive. Oh yeah, yeah. And so you can't judge by like how expensive the restaurant is because they're all expensive. Yeah. Uh, but some of them are just like I was like. Eh, this food was like it was food. It was okay, I guess. But then there was like another restaurant. I was like, holy fuck, that was really good. The problem is, there's no way to know. Like it's it. There's, I I tried to like the. Like, is there a pattern to which restaurants have good food and don't? There isn't. There isn't one. You just it's just a crapshoot. With the sole exception of as long as they don't degrade the quality, since because we went when it was brand fucking new, just opened. So, uh, so Avatar Land was like the big push there, and in our hotel room there was a channel that was just playing the movie Avatar on yeah. repeat. Uh, but the Avatar Land was fucking awesome. That was that was one of the coolest. Like the rides were awesome. The aesthetic was really cool. That was one of the best areas I've been to in a theme park ever. Yeah. They, uh, uh, and the food was fucking great. I was looking at because the Star Wars Land. We're actually planning a Disney trip in two years because uh, also you do the Edge of Tomorrow Star Wars Land. Yeah, and well, it's already it's just, it already opened. And well, my yeah, so you uh, can do it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And my uh, and my son will be old enough at that point. He's still too young to go. But yeah, we were looking at you know just things, and I was looking at the menu for the little cantina there. You could buy like the, it's actually got alcohol. They're serving alcohol there, but one of the drinks comes in a souvenir porg mug. One quarter portion, <laughs> and it's thirty two dollars. Well, yeah, you gotta get like it's a, you gotta get a thirty two dollar pork mug. The, so supposedly that they they made a they made a poof up bread. Uh, yeah, and I was that that thing that he feeds Ray in the movie. Supposedly yeah. there's a thing where like you the like they make it in front of you and they put like a little thing down and it poofs up and you can eat it. Yeah, the um and I was I was talking with uh, my wife about it and I was just like thirty two fucking dollars and she goes. 
well, I can expect for a drink like paying like sixteen dollars. And I'm like, this is the difference between you and I, Diana, is the fact that I can't ever see spending sixteen dollars on a drink. I mean, like that's for gotta an alcoholic be drinking a theme that's park. That's gotta be grain alcohol for me to enjoy it at sixteen dollars. <laughs> Think, yeah. Like I have to be instantaneously fucked up from it to enjoy well, the, the it. At sixteen dollars. The, the floofy drinks are always expensive, but thirty-two bucks is pretty out there. I That's... mean, for a souvenir mug. Yeah, and uh, I was. Uh, it sounds interesting, and I like that they're like they're enforcing a four-hour limit on being in there. So that means like, and it's Disney, so you know that they're like, there's people who are yeah, they're going to escort you. They're going to escort you off of stormtroopers. Yeah, they're, they're going to escort you from the premises with stormtroopers. That's the thing that I like the most is like, you're like, how the hell are they going to maintain it? But I'm like, it's fucking Disney. They'll know. Because the, and the, the, the mouse knows. The mouse. The mouse knows everything. Das mouse. Das mouse. M a u s. Yeah. Um, das mouse. Yeah. And you know there are, there are people who are fucking watching you, and they're like, um. You gotta escort that six foot tall redhead with the beard out. He's uh he's been in here for four hours and five minutes, and I'm like, it's like my my life meter like Logan's run starts flashing on my hand. And I'm like, no, no, he's, he's I getting still have time. he's getting belligerent, and they just start beating you with those yeah, yeah. shock rods. <laughs> Yeah. Carousel. Carousel. <laughs> Renew. Renew. <laughs> They're just beating you with shock rods, and they throw you right out of the out of the the uh, water's edge or whatever. And, and they don't allow cost- so adults aren't allowed to wear costumes in there, right? You're not so, allowed to wear costumes at Disney. Yeah, at Disney. Period. Uh, specific, and, and and it makes sense why they don't allow oh, yeah. that because they have employees who are dressed. Yeah, like, and also you can't it, have that kind of. And uh, also, you shouldn't wear a costume as an adult anyway outside of Halloween or a some sort. Of convention, right? I mean, <laughs> when you're doing that at Disney, it's like. But I, what I you can wear is you can wear costumes that are not really known as costumes. So I can wear the Logan's Run like turtleneck <laughs> with the flashy thing in my yes. hand there, and no one would know I'm a Sandman. It's true. they wouldn't know. <laughs> <A> Sandman. <laughs> we got a runner. <laughs> they all run. They all run. <laughs> and you could come as the big robot who's like. Plankton is the, the you know fruit of the sea. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like he was. It. I think he was played by Donald Pleasance in yeah. the movie. That's, or, that's a good movie. <laughs> it is a great. I, I love that movie. Yeah, it's a good Donald one. and Logan's Run was it, oh, probably one of the more formative movies of my of my youth. Of your youth. Of my youth. It was played on. They had it on um, Encore. Encore played it all the fucking time, and it had tits in there. So it's it it like. You know, thirteen-year-old watching fucking Logan's Run. I was like, "Yeah, Jenny Gooder, nice." <laughs> um, <laughs> renew, but yeah, and it's it's. I I just but I, I'm I'm having a hard time because like you know that they have the four-hour limit there because there are adults who are just like want to spend their entire fucking day there. That's all they want to do. Like their entire life has culminated to the point where they can. Immerse themselves in a Star Wars theme park for I only play Star Wars games. <laughs> I only play Star Wars games, <laughs> but that's what it comes down to. And it's you're like, worst. like what they're gonna do is they're gonna go to Star Wars and they're gonna go to Disney for like a week, and then every day they're just gonna go there and do their four hours inside and Galaxy. Clock in four yeah, hours. <laughs> clock in four hours, and they're like, well, can we go to some of the other park? No, I'm only here for Star Wars. <laughs> I only go to Star Wars theme parks, <laughs> and they go in there and they get their blue milk. And because they're serving blue and green milk Ooh, there, nice. And it's a non-dairy, non-gluten <laughs> beverage, a non-nutritive cereal varnish. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's just like I was reading it, and I was like, "Wow, they literally made this so everybody could drink it and get no nutritional value from it whatsoever." I'm sure there's vitamin F. <laughs> it's I made of drink plenty of milk. <laughs> How? Why are my bones so brittle? <laughs> and then the best part about it is too is that you will see like. Someone will make a a fake recipe for it where it's like, this is the best equivalent you could make of the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge blue milk. And people are like, oh, I've, I've made that recipe. It's pretty good. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with all these people? <laughs> what kind of world am I living in? And it's like where I have to shut down that part of the Internet. Like if I could just compartmentalize the Internet and, and like create some sort of Can't like escape add-on where it's like i'm going to eliminate all references to this if this website mentions this i want it to be quarantined so that i cannot go to this you website know, you, you can mute certain words i you can, can you, you can also use uh you can also use uh uh there's there's a several chrome extensions which let you overwrite words yeah i've seen those so yeah. I, I thought it was really funny one of the guys at work he uh he overwrote um the word football with chungus 
<laughs> so anytime anytime he was walking on his computer, he's just like, yeah, we got draft picks Chungus over here. <laughs> it's just like Chungus. <laughs> so it's like his fucking screen was hilarious because you just see like it's just like something, something Chungus, something Chungus, Chungus. <laughs> just Chungus everywhere. Uh, Pretty great. Yeah. Chungus. I like that meme. I'm sorry. Uh, it's not dead to me. <laughs> I'm okay with Big I mean, Chungus. They, uh, like they die in three days. So if you yeah. still like it, it's fine. It's It's okay. Some people not a big fan of the Chungus. I like the Chungus. <laughs> I also like the Chungus. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I believe in Chungus. <laughs> but yeah, that's not that's not what I want. I kind of want to just... It's not the thing, right? It's not Star Wars land. It's not Star Wars gaming. It's the fans. It's the people. They ruin everything. Well, yeah, people ruin everything. It's, just, it's white people ruin everything that's more true. than anything. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Try getting brunch on a Sunday, man. It's physically impossible. I would never try that, but I take your word for it. Yes, it is. Well, what? I'm, I'm not saying brunch is bad. You'd love brunch. I mean, you can't eat half of it because you're pescatarian now. And I can't eat, and I can't drink mimosas. So. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, the most important critical part of a brunch is getting absolutely fucking hammered before noon on mimosas, which I can't do. No, see, I don't like getting hammered. I like getting a nice buzz. That's There's a difference. There's the people who get hammered, and there's the people who level. No, see, that's the thing. You, you, you level, and you're like, yeah, this is good. And then you try to keep the buzz going, but you accidentally get hammered. That's well, that's, the, that's, that's, that's on the, mimosas. That's the great game, sir. That's the great <laughs> the great game. game. <laughs> I'm going to get just one Bloody Mary. They put it on the table. It's in a big fucking chungus glass. Yeah, and you're like, fuck. It's like, it's like it's got an entire tropical forest on the top with Jake Sully riding a dragon <laughs> through it. And you're like, god damn, that's big ass Bloody Mary. Well, chug, 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 chug. chug, chug. I said I'd only drink one. Well, it's equivalent to four Bloody Marys. So have fun with that. Still in what container? Yeah, it's, it counts as one. It counts as one. As, as the great Gimli said, it still only counts as one. <laughs> and it has like, what kind of vodka did you use in here? This, is this well vodka? Well, it's actually lower than well vodka. Um, we don't have a name for it yet, but it's it's all of the vodka that pools at the bottom of the, the, the bar rail. If we were to give it a proof, we would say it's 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't smoke around it. <laughs> yeah, actually don't smoke for several hours after you've consumed it. Yeah, it's, it's made of the vodka, from the, vodka from, the, from the drink well. After we pour the vodka and a little bit spills down the side, it collects at the bottom of the bar rail. So we just take that, we squeegee it down, and put it into our brunch vodka, our brunch Bloody Marys. You can't tell the difference because tomato juice pretty much covers up the taste of everything else. We call it vodka squeezins. <laughs> vodka sque- Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm all about vodka squeezins. Nice. <laughs> put, a cu- put a couple olives and some blue cheese on there. You got me set. You can- I know you can't eat any of that shit no. anymore. But it's, it's cool. Yeah. It's okay. I, I love it. I don't care. You I'm on a need, diet too. You don't need to care. I'm, I've, I, <laughs> I've lost a ton of weight. I'm okay. I'm great. And eat some vodka. They eat some vodka squeezes. Well, I mean, there's always the vodka diet. You can eat whatever you want as long as it's vodka. <laughs> <laughs> the vodka diet, the one thing your liver can't bounce back from. The liver, the most uh, the most flexible organism uh, organ in your body, where it's just like I can take anything. Just keep throwing it at me. Keep throwing it at me. And I'm just like. What if I drink vodka and it's like, no, man, no. <laughs> it's going to be a no for me, dog. <laughs> it's going to be a no for me. My buddy at work, he's an alcoholic. Uh, not like a, like, a, like a terrible alcoholic. He's a functional alcoholic. And he's like, yeah, I was worried about my liver. So I went to the doctor and he checked it out. He said, everything's looking good. I go, yeah, your liver is really, really good at doing this, its job. Now, think of all those people who have liver failure, how much you drink, and then think about what they have to do to have liver failure. And he's like, also oh. time. And he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Oh man, that's they're real bad. <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, the uh, the other the only other gaming stuff I have is I just got some um, thoughts on the the contrast paints. I haven't I haven't I'm excited about them, but I obviously haven't used them yet. Yeah. Uh, I've seen I've seen a lot of people because people got some in advance, so I've seen some videos of them actually in action, like yeah. like people sharing videos. They look fucking sweet. I'm very excited about them. My. Uh, my my favorite thing is is that so online there are three tiers of people who are talking about this and it kind of corresponds to painting levels, so people who don't paint their shit or you know have trouble getting armies done are really excited about it, um, especially newer players are like oh this is gonna be fucking great I'm gonna be able to get some shit done, and you know I've seen the I've seen the the, the sprays that they do for underneath. They actually look really nice. They're very very thin, which I was surprised about how thin the actual. Uh, coat comes out on it because you know I'm used to a thicker coat. Everyone's used to one thick coat. One thick coat. Yeah. So this is a, a a nice thin coat with the with the spray on there. So they're very excited about it. They're like, this is great. Then there's the medium tier 
painters. These are the painters who think they are good painters because they're probably the only one of three people in their hobby shop who actually paints the models that they're putting on the table. Like, and everyone's like, oh, your your models are really good because they're the only fucking painter in the thing. And they're always like, Bleh, no, I don't want anything to do with these contrast paints. These are these are for uh, people who don't know how to highlight or, or shade their models or, or use the technicals. I'm like... It, 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 they're like they're very crabby and very angry about it. <laughs> trying to be elitists about, it, about very paint. El- they're trying to be elitist about paint. <laughs> and then there's like the top tier players and the top tier painters. And these are oh, okay. Let's not say good golden demon, but these are the guys who actually do full armies. They do nice stuff. Um, they can compete in golden demon. Let's just put it that way. And they're like, I just want to see what I could do with this. I want to use it in every. You know, imaginal way. I want to use it in like Slaneshi ways. I, I saw a dude, uh, a Golden Demon winner, who was painting some Skaven with them, and uh, he he painted two Skaven models. He's like, I did these in about two hours, and he's like, they're he's like he's like I need to stress this. He's like, I need to stress this fact. There's nothing on this model other than the the spray and contrast paints. And I was like, holy shit! Like holy fuck! Like it looked. Be uh, it looked fucking ridiculous. And he's like, he's like, all it is is contrast paints. And he's like, you can, he's like, you can get so much work done by just varying your application and thinning and doing this and that. Because it was, it was a, it was a warp block engineer, and it looked, it looked like you did blending and highlights and all the shit. And he's like, there's just contrast paints. I was like, that is fucking insane. Well, when I was talking with you know some some high quality painters, and they were like, I want to see how this works over different colors. I want to see how this works. Like, if I've you seen d- it over metallics, it looks very cool. It does. Um, the only thing with metallics is I want to know how many coats you have to do. That's the problem. So I want to play with that. Nose. But there's people who are like, like if I took um, a flesh color of the contrast and I painted it over, like let's say a base coat of flesh, how is that going to work? Mm-hmm. How is that going to look? I want to see like what I can play with, what I can do, what I can. I can manipulate with That's these colors. No, no, no. Uh, my my Nurglemans are uh, they're airbrushed. They're like they're ready. They're ready for uh, they're ready for contrast. They're ready for contrast. They're ready for contrast. Uh, they're ready for contrast. They're, they're prepped. They're <laughs> prepped. Um, I'm 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 excited about it. I want to give it a try. Um, I'm. I don't think that we're going to find out the actual cost sometime this week. I think there's seven bucks. That we're going to find the actual cost out this week when the pre-orders when they start when they release the. Uh, what the pre-orders are going to be. Um, they're bigger. I think it's 10 milliliters? Yeah, they're bigger than uh, the normal paint, normal, pot. Normal paint pot. They're like, because I saw But they're smaller than the inks. Than the old ones. The, well, no, no, they're smaller than the big, tall inks. Oh, okay, right. They're, so I they think they're like 10 millimeters. I think the inks are 12. Okay. Which is still ridiculously amount of money for what you're paying, that, what you're getting there. So, I mean, I, I want to see how much they cost. I want to see how that works. Um, from what I've been tell, what I've been told, you're not supposed to dilute them. You're not supposed to use water. They have a uh, a thinner, yeah, uh, a medium. Um, so it's gonna be water. You're not supposed to use, but medium's okay. Yes, medium is okay. It'll be interesting. I'm also interested to see when other paint companies mimic this, like how that will look, because that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna try and come up with their own. Yeah, Army, if they're Army successful, Painter, Army Painter will be the one to do it first. I'm sure. Yeah, Army Painter or Vallejo, because uh, Army Painter so far has been able to duplicate all of the, um, like the special effects paints, like Blood <clears throat> for the Blood God and Nurgle yeah, Rod yeah. and stuff. Like they have a they and they're they have a patina as well. Uh, Nikola Oxide, same thing. They're the only ones that I know that actually do pretty well at duping the technical paints. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm. I'm that's that'll be the interesting part to see where that goes yeah, and no, how no. that happens. Um, because as but Games Workshop, I love them taking innovation and doing this stuff, but their fucking shit is overpriced for what it is. Very expensive. Yeah, and especially the fucking paints themselves. Their your paints are great, but your paint pots are fucking terrible. Well, they're made so you can spill them. They're made so you can spill them. <laughs> they're made so they dry out. Um, you get next to no paint for that amount of money. I mean, it's like what five bucks a tub and five bucks a pot. And I don't think it's that high, but it's still high. Yeah, let's say so. Let's say five bucks. Just I think it's like four fifty. In all honesty. Yeah. Well, they did. They did just raise the prices for paint. Yeah. So. So let's say it's five bucks, and you're literally paying for like half of what you get in a Vallejo bottle, and a Vallejo is only like three twenty five. It's ridiculous, and Vallejo is like, you're paying for three twenty five, but you have to thin the fuck out of so much of your Vallejo, 
or Army Painter or whatever that it's like you're buying like three times the equivalent of the Games Workshop. <laughs> like, yes, I appreciate the Games Workshop has thinned their paints, but when you thin your paints that much and you have to make us, uh, um, uh, what's it called? And, and you're selling less of it for more. It's like, God damn. You know what they say, less is more. Yeah. Ugh. Um, however, I do like the Soul Stone colors, whatever it's called, like Soul Stone Blue. In the and those those yeah they're cool and then they're they're discontinuing their glazes and then they're bringing Forge World glazes up so. I, it's something something's going on yeah because Forge World has a series of glazes something happening here and those are going to come to replace the GW range what which is going to discontinue so. I wonder if they're bringing back Sons of Horus Green a lot mm. of people got upset when that got discontinued mm -hmm. where's my Sons of Horus Green <laughs> <laughs> all, all I know is that I uh, the glazes were one of the lines of paints that I bought all of and I was like I'm going to use these a lot. I think I've used them like once. I use them all the fucking time. I use them very much. Um, they're really good for 40k. You wouldn't. You don't play 40k, so you don't need them. Yeah. Like yeah, I'm using I use over them, armor and shit. Yeah, over armor. It's it's basically the concept that I use it for. Um, the the thing that I, I fucking this is what what I tell people when it comes to painting because what I, it's one of the things that I hate is I I you know I'm a teacher. I I I teach people on a daily basis. I have to pretend to be nice during my teaching to these to the people to the students so that they are feel like they're in a welcoming environment. But in my real life, like when people are like, Oh, Joe's a teacher. He could teach me how to paint. I'm a fucking horrendous person to teach you how to paint because I hate it. I hate teaching you how to paint because I'm like, I took fucking 30 years, 20 years of my life learning how to do this. <laughs> and you want me to teach you it in an afternoon. It's not going to fucking work. I'm an, I'm an angry person. This is lifelong <laughs> technique learned. It's easy. You spray it, you wash it, you're done. Done. <laughs> yeah. So it, when it, so I, I get to that point, and then it's like these people who are like, oh, my son's a Horace Green got discontinued. Well, that's your own fucking fault for becoming so fucking dependent on one color. <laughs> I forget what colors I'm using 90% hey, of the time if you need, if in you, the middle of a you, project. If you use a color that much, you should have a shit ton of it. Yeah. But as I'm saying, like, in the middle of a project, I will forget what color I am using. And, like, I'll be like, what color did I paint that pouch? Fuck it. I'm using this one. <laughs> it's brown now. It's brown. It's, it's bestial brown now. Bestial brown. Bestial brown. I have to go back to the archives. Like, like go back. <laughs> bestial brown. <laughs> and also ghostly gray <laughs> <laughs> some snake bite leather actually they're bringing snake bite leather it's one of the contrast paints oh nice they call it snake bite leather nice. i think bite brown or whatever nice. i was like nice that's cool that's fun but yeah i get like i'll i will to i will forget i have three different color grays that i use on a regular basis i have like gray green london gray and dark gray well and i consistently forget which one the, i use the problem with the problem with trying to teach someone how to paint is like a lot of it is not a lot of it's not viable. Like, I, like I'm like, you need to line highlight that, and they're like, okay. I'm like, what's line highlight? Well, you go like this with the brush, and like I do it, and I show them like, oh, that looks really cool, and then they try to do it and they can't, and it's just like, like yeah, you, you have to practice doing that. Like I can't, like I can't teach you yeah. how to do that. Like it's like it, it's something where you like I can show you the concept, but application of said concept is up to you. Like yeah. that's that's all it is, and and, and that's just the way like painting works. Like you can teach people theory, yeah. and you can teach people how things are supposed to work. But actually, because because it's a mechanical skill, it's a, or yeah. uh, is it is that right? Mecha yeah, it's a, it's a it's a physical mechanical skill set that like you can't you can't teach that you can you can show someone, but like they have to learn it themselves. They have to train well, I mean, themselves. Yeah, to do you it. have to. Yeah, you could do that. It's like occupational therapy. Uh, but let's say my buddy Chris, who's who I'm, I'm I was, I've been showing how to do some painting stuff with. He's a guitar. He's a guitar teacher, right? So he teaches people how to play guitar. And I, and I, I've said to him before. I'm like, teaching you how to paint would be the equivalent of you teaching me the opening of classical gas. <laughs> 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 Not play classical gas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so we're getting towards the end here. Do we have any other gaming stuff that we want to talk about? And there wasn't much news in the last two weeks. I mean, there has been, but there's not it's much to do about nothing. Um, yeah, just uh, a lot of a lot of stuff that I'm kind of like, Meh. all right. <laughs> I got Skyrim VR. Oh, they're doing a Skyrim board game too. Oh, the Skyrim minis game. That's yeah, right. Skyrim minis game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what is it? It's it's not Skyrim. It's it's a it's a it's Elder Scrolls. Yeah, it's Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls are doing a full. The the first mini they showed was the the Skyrim guy though. Yeah, the uh, the Dragonborn. Dragonborn. But uh, yeah, it sounds it sounds cool. I think it's gonna use the I think it's gonna use the same engine as the Fallout game. Yeah, that's what it sounded so, like. That's a really fun and very good engine, so I, I, I support it. That game will be cool. Yeah, I mean it. It should be. I mean, it'd, it'd be nice to get some like fantasy esque minis on there. 
Uh, you, there's no, no reason why it can't work. No, no, absolutely. I, yeah, there's, there, it, and that's a great that's a great setting for uh, for warbands too. So like, it'll be really good. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see that being anything anything bad. The only problem is it will probably take away from some of the Fallout players. This one, yeah, I don't I don't know if it will because like. Cause like I mean I, I I'm I'm gonna just keep playing Fallout. I'm I'm not gonna yeah. jump to the the Elder Scrolls game. But I think that there's I think it, I I don't think there's I think there's a lot of video game crossover there. But I don't know if there's gonna be a lot of tabletop game crossover. Be, yeah. Because I think if you were specifically into like like if you wanted to play the Fallout like you want to play the Fallout minis game because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that post-apocalyptic slash Fallout thing. Yeah. I don't think you're gonna immediately jump to. Well, what I see is fun about Fallout. Elder Scrolls. I mean, you might think differently about this but when i see fallout the the f most fun thing that i see about that is the terrain like the post-apocalyptic oh yeah you know like the the retro 50s fi retro 50s style yeah, terrain it's cool. that's retro cool. future 50s yeah that's that's cool to me like just being like oh i get to make a diner yeah, or, vending machines yeah yeah, yeah it's and cool. cool stuff like that that's awesome um it's the same like like tim loves wants to do a zombie apocalypse game so bad and the only reason why he wants to do that is because he wants to do like ruined buildings ruined buildings that are like but not like 40k ruined buildings he wants to do like shopping malls and and like corn convenience stores sure. and things like that which is cool but chopping mall yeah but you can't there's no yeah. chopping in that movie yeah and that's what's not cool to me like like fallout i'm like eh, i don't really care for the video game i'm not like but i'm like some of this terrain i've seen on like to make for the STLs for 3D printing, I'm like, this would be pretty cool to make. Yeah, I have the gas station uh, piece, which is really cool. I like it a lot. They're, yeah. And they're doing a crashed vertebrate, which is look, looks awesome. Yeah, the um, the but that's for Skyrim, you don't really get that because it's just standard fantasy yeah, terrain. It'll just be normal, like you know, trees and stuff. Yeah. Although Skyrim, they can do uh, they could do their like, you know, those things where you get the dragon words, those yeah. like big uh, what are the boss relief is what they yeah, call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could they could make those, which will be cool. They could they can definitely do some nice uh, Elder Scrolls terrain, which will. Also work in your whatever fantasy game you're playing, which yeah. is cool. Well, that's yeah, they they would translate well into just about so anything yeah, fantasy. That's that's one. Of, I, I guess that's one of the things that's nice about it is like it's it's kind of like that's the double edged sword because it's like it's not going to be most likely it won't be anything where you're like wow that's super cool because it's just terrain. Yeah. But on the other hand, you're going to have more uh, a mul more multifaceted use for it because it's like with Fallout, I think the train's fucking incredible looking, but like it's a ruined diner. I can't use that for my Age of uh, Age of Sigmar game. No, you can't. <laughs> but you can maybe use that for 40k. Uh, you could probably use it for 40k. Yeah. You could, I mean, I see a little bit of a stretch. As, but I, yeah. as I've said, I've seen people use worse on their tables. Sure. <laughs> There's trust me. Anything that you put on the table that's nice and painted and actually a full piece of terrain is going to look nice. Yeah. Okay, as long as you don't put it on a square p base, like <laughs> yeah, that's weird. that's although I there's there's round the fucking edges. You, Steve. you can get away with it on uh, city block buildings. Like there was a few that had like I saw. Yeah, I saw they did the like there was an, an imperium like square of buildings and they all had very straight. It's rectangle the exception bases, that proves the rule. Yes, is what it is exactly. Um, but yeah, the the Skyrim stuff could be could be relatively cool. The but it goes down to what I've been what I've been saying in the past, and that I'm finally glad that some people are, for some odd reason, the game the gaming industry is actually coming around to a lot of the things that I've been saying for years. Um, one of the things that I've been saying is is that games need to have set lives, like like Fallout, for example. I mean, I know you love Fallout. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it should have like a one to four and like a four year time limit, and saying like, look, we're only going to be producing this game from 2000 to oh, 2000 like a season, yeah. Like, or let's say we're going to be producing this game from 2019 to 2023. These are, this is the only time that this game is going to be produced. And then after that, it's going away. It's going to go out of print. So, you know, get it now if you want to play it. And then maybe in five or six years, or they could bring it back, you know, and put it back into print and say, like, you know, some new stuff or a new edition of the rules. But you have a set life and you tell people the set life of the game. So that way they know that, like, oh, shit, this is going to go away after a certain amount of years mm -hmm. if we want to play it. Rather than just letting them organically go away like most games? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I talked to some people, and, like, the, the main reason that would hold that back is game stores, because game stores wouldn't want to have something that they can only have in store. Yeah, you don't want to give expiration. That, that's what, sticking expiration dates on your games would negatively impact your sales, no question. However, if more games started doing that and people realized that it would go out of print... And thus become rare, and thus become expensive. I think the I think the, the the best way to do that functionally would be to meet in the middle of it. So like let's let's use Fallout as an example. Uh, the core game will not be going out of like the, the or this edition of the core game will be in print for two years or whatever. 
Uh, after those two years, we'll be doing a new edition of the core game, so on and so forth. The expansion boxes will only be in print for blah blah blah. Like yeah, and then and then you like you rotate through your product like that. Like your the game, you don't you don't put an actual expiration date on your game, but you just you rotate through the the, the product line. It, that that's magic because that's what magic does. Because mm-hmm. magic's like everything is gonna go out of print after X years. Period. Yeah. But like they have no like they're gonna print magic until people stop buying it, which will pretty much be never. Yeah. I mean, I think that is. I I think it's an. I don't know if it's a, a, the best way or an interesting way. I think it's a new way of doing things that would revitalize the industry because right now... Plus, you can always, you can always go back and reprint. Yeah, exactly. And right now, what are gaming stores doing? They're sitting on a fuck ton of product because board games are going... Are just keep printing and printing and yeah. printing. And yeah, you and never know. Board game sales are going down. because Board game sales are going down. There, There's too many. And no one knows what's going to hit. So they, they try to stock... A little bit of everything, and then one game hits, and then they can't get it in the fucking store yep. because that's what and it is. And they're sitting on dead product. They're, they're trying s- to get a game that they can't get. Yeah, exactly. Yep, absolutely. So what you do is you you build up hype. Say this game is only going to be – you say this core game is going to be around for three – let's yeah, say four this years. This is the core game for three years. Yeah, this is the core game for three years. We're not saying we're going to do another edition after that, but this game is only going to be in print. Yeah. Or th- we'll change the models. Like, something will be changed. changed. Yeah. M- maybe not a new edition, but there's going to be new factions in the starter or whatever. Yeah, or, or whatever have mm-hmm. you. This is what it's going to be for this X amount of time. People can be like, and it's like, you, you pump it, you, you say, this is what it's going to be. You could have the stuff in your store for three years, and then after that, you don't have to fucking have it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could do it, you could do it like, uh, it's all, all, almost similar to Gundam style. So the way, the way Gundam uh, kits work is like, there's a massive there's like a there's like a thousand or more Gundam kits like there's so fucking many but the way Gundam works is they go these are the 10 kits that are coming and they they print them and they're done yeah and then they will go back and then they'll 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 re they'll do reissues but it could be years like like this 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 mobile suit hasn't been in print for two years like that you missed it when it was in print Oh, but it's coming back. This wave, like it's going to be in, the, and, they, and they, that's how they, that's how they work their stock. They do not keep their like thousand kits in print. They do print waves. Like speaking of Gundam, something this. I meant to ask you before is: Have you ever used the Gundam paints? Uh, I've used the Gundam uh, markers, which are really nice. Yeah, I've never used their paints. No. I think they're just Tamiya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. They're think like they're... little squeeze bottle, like Mecha paints. I think. Yeah, yeah. Called. I think I think it's just Tamiya. Yeah, yeah. but but they're. Uh, their markers, the Gundam markers, are awesome. Yeah, they're very cool. They're, yeah. they're, they're, I saw them the other day, and I I never like. I was like, oh, uh, I wonder how they. I bet you Steve's used those. The, the Gundam markers are basically uh, they have different um, heads. Like there's like wedge and there's like point. But what they are is they're essentially paint inside of a pen. They're yeah. like it's like a paintbrush. So like you can, like you can use like the orange wedge and like because that's what I did for um, uh, for a commission a long time ago. But I did. Uh, he wanted very very. Like I want the tactic, like the squad markings on my shoulder and my shoulder pads, and I was just like, I don't want to hand paint that. And I was just like, Oh, Gundam markers! And I just grabbed Gundam markers. And I was just like, Tactical, tactical, tactical. And it was just like, Oh yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, boy. yeah. It was because it's like it's made, like it's a pen, so you just whoop, you just draw it on. There's a German company that does some nice stuff like that. Um, that I've gotten at uh, Dick Blick. I think it's just called Blick, but I <laughs> call it to call it Dick, Dick Blick still. still. Um, but yeah, that's a, the the. Uh, I also I use the Tamiya tape too, the little. Oh yeah, it's know, nice masking tape that they have. All right, um, I think that's about it. So go to Planet Arbor. Oh, <laughs> You're still doing it. Yeah, go to Game Classy Podcast uh, Facebook page. It's the best way to get in contact with us. Uh, you can if you uh, like our Facebook page, you can talk to us. T- tell us dumb things. Tell us news that we we're hoping to break on the podcast. <laughs> Anyway, give me something to break. Give me something to talk about, because we all we're gonna do is we're gonna sit and talk about. You know, what we didn't talk about today, the end of Game of Thrones. <laughs> That's the, the exact sound that people online were making too. There were a lot of people <laughs> butthurt about it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it was like viewed by like 14 million people. So yeah. like, yeah, sure. If two million people hated it, that's still only two million out of 14 million. Yeah. Oh, Not you were, the two million. Is you a were lot. disappointed by something you love. Welcome to life. I, um, I, I didn't think it was. I, I don't know. I did. People were just like. The level of vitriol about it seemed kind of ridiculous to me. I was just kind of like, I don't know. Like, th- I, I felt I was just like, okay. Like that when I when I watched it, I was just like, okay. Like, like that was like the. You end. know why? I was like, okay. Because you're 38 years old and you've been disappointed by many many things in your life, just like I have. Okay. You're not 38, but I mean, okay. you, you know what I'm saying. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, the thing I cared most about was the Clegane Bowl, yeah. and that was fucking awesome. Yeah. That was fantastic. But, like, once that was over, I was just like, after the end of that, which was the fifth episode, yeah. after that fifth episode, I was like, I was like, I don't care about any of the characters that are left. <laughs> I was like, that was that was what happened. Like at the end of the episode, I real I, I come to the realization that like the the characters that remained in the show didn't care. I was just like, huh, all right. And then like I don't know the ending. The only thing I cared about was Jon Snow got to go off and have his with his gay best friend. Don't and go on you a- forget about <laughs> me? I I think that the it was. I will I will not argue. It definitely felt undeniably rushed. Because they wanted that Star Wars money. They wanted sweet, sweet Star they Wars money. They wanted sweet, sweet Star Wars money. We only make Star Wars movies. <laughs> we only make Star Wars shows now. Uh, but, like, I don't know. It was okay, I guess. Like, yeah. I, I didn't think it was great, but I didn't think it was as, like, people were just like, ah! I, I don't know. I, I, whatever. I, I, yeah. I, I don't like getting into discourse about pop culture anymore. I'm too old for it. Exa- exa- <laughs> exactly. I'm just, I'm just like, well, whatever. I, like, I don't know. It was fine. Like, Listen, man. That, that was, like, that, that was, but that's the problem. Like, I, I don't have strong feelings about it because I felt at the ending, I was like, yo, it's fine. Like, no. Was it great? No. Was it terrible? No. It was fine. It was like it was okay. Like, yeah. what did you expect? Like, what did well, you want? It's the want? same thing about people who get mad about like Infinity uh, about uh, Endgame. It's just like, chill the fuck out, dude. Just it's it's a thing. It's it's there's no nothing in life matters by this. I, I don't know. I, I mean, there I get, are like, people dying in the streets of certain countries. Yeah, I, I don't um, know. Like, you but, can be critical about like pop culture, but like people take it a little, little yeah, seriously. because that becomes their life. It's like when when a Disney is your personality, you know, that's the fa- shit that happens. Fandoms have uh, have have grown to an unreasonable level at this point. That's why we need a culling. Uh, um, <laughs> hey, we've, we we discussed our calling plan. The, 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 I listen to a, I listen to a Goosebumps podcast called Goosebuds, and they also have calling plans. <laughs> calling plans. Yeah, their calling plans is pretty good. Uh, one of them was like, first of all, you just take forty percent of the population, bam, kill them. And I know that I'm probably in that forty percent. Doesn't matter. Kill them. <laughs> uh, He's like, that's the first step. Forty <laughs> percent's generous. Um, Yes, so go to planetarbitrary. Uh, God damn it, go to game callingplans.com. <laughs> callingplans.com. <laughs> no, listen, it's just a, a thinking exercise about genocide. That's all this is, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I still stand by. I think I have the I think I have the best one. The first question is just is the earth, earth flat? flat. Yes. And you say if you say yes, it then goes are you sure? <laughs> if you say yes, bam, they kill you. <laughs> that's that's the that's the first Do, question. <laughs> question question 3 after that. Do vaccines cause autism? <laughs> you say yes. Are you, you sure? sure? <laughs> you say yes, they kill you. Yeah. That is it. All of them do need the are you sure like yep. like that is that is I, i'm gonna give people that i'm gonna give people the are you sure mm, yes uh, the vaccines cause us them yes are you sure mm, yes <laughs> yeah exactly if you go no, but if you go no they'll be like all right and then then, then, but then gonna, question five yeah, yeah yeah i like it um so yes uh and then uh you could also go to uh my instagram page which is uh game classy joe you see all my painted stuff, all my painted models. Uh, also, a good way of getting in contact with me. I know a lot of fans of the podcast do it that way as well, who don't like Facebook. Hey, you can pay for Instagram followers. It's like five bucks, and you can get yourself forty thousand followers. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Yeah, but you could be all you could be all big pimping. You could be I, like, I, I have like, over forty thousand followers on Instagram. I like the organic way that I grow Instagram followers because I, th- I think I my in- I have more Instagram followers than I do. Fa- that we have Facebook fans at this point. Yeah, I mean, I had like. For when I was when I was active on Instagram, like paint, like showing, doing models, I got like up to a fucking t- a thousand followers. And oh, I was yeah. just like, why? What the fuck? I all I did was did I just posted random shit and like you, it just snowballs. Yeah. Um. Yes. So then you could also listen to our the best way you can talk about the podcast is like, comment, subscribe on iTunes. It's Game Classy Podcast on iTunes. Give us five stars. You can say whatever you want in the comments. I, I don't. Give I would a shit. actually really enjoy. Like, I actually have a suggestion. I was thinking about this the other day. But if you give us a five star review, I would absolutely love if your review had nothing to do with our podcast. <laughs> like, like, like five stars, and then write like a, just some copy pasta, copy pasta, or like write a review that for a podcast that isn't ours. Yeah. Like, like for the Bob Vila, like home homeowners, like extravaganza you podcast know, you know a lot of a lot of uh a lot of those guys like the people who do the you know um this old house did not like bob vila 
I found out that he was a yeah because he's he was like he was the Hulk Hogan of home improvement shows. He was the Hulk Hogan of home improvement shows. Yeah, like you, they, they, everyone hates the everyone hates the the Hulk Hogan guy. Yeah, because yeah, dude, the wrestlers fucking hated Hogan. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They felt, like, they, they that's felt a that great it was, comparison. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they and they like so Hogan specifically is a really good one because they felt that he was like unjustifiably popular, which I agree with. Like Hulk Hogan was not a very good wrestler. Let's do a but se- he was popular. Let's do a series of RPGs based on like real world like jobs. That people like you know how like tra- Train Simulator is super popular in Germany. Train Simulator is just super popular. That game is fucking yeah, but huge. like but like farm Can't like how popular simulators farm simulator. in, in Germany are like super huge. Like people will spend their entire days doing this. I don't, I'm just saying Germany because I know that Germany is very popular. Let's do a series of RPGs like home renovation RPG. And basically what you do is the game master takes you through like a home renovation process and it's literally like, all right, so we're going to go to Home Depot and we have to pick up some, it's like you're running through like these stupid like everyday things, but it's just normal everyday, like we're going to fix up an 18th century farmhouse. And it's like, that's the module. You've got to have a Dutch colonial. (laughs) Yeah. Like a Dutch colonial module. And you, the the game master takes you through like, oh, I found some dry rot in the basement. What are you going to do? Oh, and take a roll. Oh, black mold. Black mold. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna. This one's gonna be a tough one to flip. Mary, we're gonna lose our shirts on this house. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna balance your budgets. Yeah, you gotta yeah. balance the budgets. You gotta make sure you could flip it. You're flipping the house. That's what you gotta White do. White people flipping houses. <laughs> that's what. This is what we gotta do. This is that's that is. It White sounds... people renovating houses. The tabletop RPG. <laughs> I like the concept of it being called white people flipping houses in yeah, the RPG. White people renovating houses in the RPG. Yes, I, I like, yes, renovating houses in the yeah, RPG. The tabletop RPG. Yeah. yeah. And so you could actually, like, have, like, product catalogs as, like, your supplements. Like, we don't have to do any work. We just go to, like, fucking Rockler Woodworking and get their catalog. Take their, take their brands off and put our own. <laughs> put our own on there. Literally do no work. Rebind it. That's our module that we give out. So people are like, "Oh, I like these brass hinges. They only cost fifteen dollars a piece. Can we put? Is that within our budget line?" And the other player's like looking through it, and he's like, "Um, yes, but we're gonna have to cut back on the brush steel nickel. You know, roll for open concept. <laughs> roll for open. Concept. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need an open concept here. I think this will work. It's the most boring RPG. Out, the breakfast nook. <laughs> It's the most boring RPG in the world, but that's it. And then at the very hey, look, man, they had a fucking uh, what was it? Uh, <laughs> leverage RPG. <laughs> or we could make it so that it's fantasy based. So like you're an orcs re- re- renovating a house. Like oh nice. So like, like, this hobbit hole's got a lot of dry rot in the wood. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have to pull that out. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have any refrigeration units, and you just keep all your food inside of a pantry. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how we do it it's here. Mostly just cheese. <laughs> mostly just cheeses. Well, I guess if you want the art, like it's just like super boring, like straightforward. It's pies. <laughs> yeah, no, no action. You don't have to roll for like a lot of things. You just, you know, it's just a lot of like, well, we're gonna do this. We're gonna build it up and and do it this way. And at the end, you fight a dragon. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. No, no, the dragon's pissed because you renovated his cave shittily. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, something like that. You know. You know, like, like these treasure piles aren't big enough. <laughs> I think, uh, I, yeah, man, I, I wish I had a hobbit hole. You see, you, but you see my concept. Like, it's like this sounds I super see your boring. Open concept, but but, but it's like <laughs> people in Germany will play this game. <laughs> Someone will play this game, um, or, or yeah, that's I I think that would be the most interesting. Like, white people flipping houses, or we could say elves flipping houses. That would that would be the name of the concept. Um. All right, so yeah, best way to help with the podcast like like comment and subscribe on iTunes. You can also like comment and subscribe on the YouTube page. Some people do. I don't understand why, but they do. Um, I told you it's because it's because you can uh, if you have one of the YouTube apps, you can you can queue up a bunch of podcasts. People love doing pod. There's a reason a lot of podcasts go up to YouTube because a lot of people use the YouTube player, and you can make a playlist of your podcasts. You want to know what annoyed me? I was looking for the for Noid. An- yes, <laughs> avoid the Noid. <laughs> uh, that guy got. Who was named Noid got and went insane and killed a bunch of people. Wasn't he dressed as the Noid? No, he was just a guy whose last name was, was Noid. I thought there was a dude who was dressed as the Noid and nah, shot that, people too. That might happen, but what I'm, so I'm, we have both a guy a guy named Noid and a guy dressed as the Noid. Well, that was the thing is because you know it was the 1980s, so people took shit way too far in the 1980s. So he was as uh, opposed to now, where they take yeah, shit way too I mean, far. <laughs> in the 80s, it was worse. Um, I will I will stand by that statement. Because there was less things. <laughs> yes, because there was less things. So people, like, fucking, like, uh, where's the beef was a national phenomenon, Steve? 
<laughs> Did they ever find the bean? <laughs> no, but Walter Mondale used it as a presidential slogan in 1984. Um, <laughs> that's how bad it was. Um, Clara Peller was a fucking... People remember Clara Peller's name. Uh, but there was, yeah, there was a guy named Noid who, like, people were like, ah, avoid Noid, and it, like, truck and drove him insane, and he killed people. Um, yes, uh, you can also listen to our sister podcast, Shin Play On Podcast Neo. Shin Play On Pod Neo. Damn it! Shin Play On Pod Neo. Almost. Uh, and then you also have, uh, Deconstructing Daycare, where you can listen to both of those, and they, it's, it's kind of our big family of, of podcasts and fun stuff. Uh, so, Steve... Until next cast, it could be bigger than Pokemon. <laughs> Game classy. <laughs>